Hi, my name is Hector Garcia. I'm an accountant and I'm a big fan of QuickBooks. I want to talk to you about the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is the place where you can see all of the categories in which every transaction gets accounted into in order to create a report. Now I'm going to talk about the chart of accounts inside QuickBooks desktop. QuickBooks desktop is the one that looks like this, the one that's on the screen. That's the one that you install in a, in a PC, in a Windows PC. And uh, you may have QuickBooks Desktop Pro, you may have QuickBooks Premier, QuickBooks Accountant, or QuickBooks Enterprise, and it will look exactly like this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, right here on the company file I have open, I'm going to go ahead and click on Chart of Accounts. Now, there's a couple of places I can do that. In the home screen, uh, there's a little button here that says, chart of accounts, I can just click on that and that will work just fine. And once I click it, you see that you get to the chart of accounts. I'm going to hit escape to close that window and show you another way to get to it. We can also go onto the list menu so we can click on list and chart of accounts. Okay. So list chart of accounts, that's another way of doing it. That will take you to the chart of accounts. And lastly, we can use the keyboard shortcut, which is control a control a like account. Control A, that will take me into the chart of accounts. Now I'm gonna go ahead and collapse um, the left navigation bar. So I have the most amount of real estate that way we can kind of concentrate on what we're seeing here on the screen. Now on this particular file, there's already a whole bunch of accounts there. And as you can see here on the right side, some of them are carrying balances. Now, the ones that carry balance are known as balance sheet accounts. Let me make this a little bit smaller by clicking on the minimize window here. And let me make it about this size. That way we can kind of zoom in and see all the accounts together. Perfect. That's actually much better. So we have accounts that have a running balance. So these are considered to be balance sheet accounts. If I scroll down some more and I go all the way up to maybe the very last one that has a running balance and I'm going to go ahead and just draw a line there. If I see the very last one that there's a balance, you see that that's when the equity accounts switch over to income accounts. At that point, that's how you know that everything above that line, so everything from here and up, it's a balance sheet account, and everything from that line down would be an income statement account or a profit and loss account. So the easiest way to identify them is with these running balances, even if the running balance is zero. It's really important. Even if there's a running balance of zero, that's still a balance sheet account. If you start a QuickBooks file from scratch, these are all going to be zeros. But if you open a live file or a sample file like I have here, they're all gonna have running balances. Now, what's also particular about uh, these accounts that carry balances, so all the ones that have a number there on their balance total, is that you can click on them. I can click on any of them and it will take me into a register. So a register, when I, get out of that one and open a different one. Let me open this one that may have more transactions. So a register would be uh, basically a window that shows me every single transaction that made that account go up or down in balance. Uh, in other words, every debit and every credit from accounting terms that affected that balance. And then uh, from here, I can double click on any of the transactions, which it may be. I can double click on it and it will take me to the actual transaction, the specific transaction that I was um, looking at that affect, affect that balance. Now you may see multiple, multiple types of transactions um, affecting this chart accounts accounts. Account. The most common accounts uh, that, that we are uh, working with are going to be bank accounts and credit card accounts account because those are going to have a whole bunch of transactions affecting it. However, there's a whole bunch of other accounts account that have nothing to do with banking or credit cards. Um, that we also manage. Well. For example, we have current assets and we have we have fixed assets, and then we have down here and here current liability and, and long term liability. So in a nutshell, we can we track not just not just banking credit card balances. We can track other other assets that we may own, even fixed assets and, and um, liabilities or loans. All right, so let's create a couple of accounts here um, to do some examples. So for example, let's say that I have. Um, a piece of equipment that I want to record into my chart of accounts. Now, for the time being, forget about the actual transaction in which you use to purchase the equipment. 
that we're going to forget about that for a minute uh, now. Let's just talk about the essence of an account in the chart of accounts. So let's say we have a piece of machinery that costs, let's say, $10,000. So for me to record it in the chart of accounts, I'm going to just right click anywhere, you know, click with the right mouse button and click on new. Now I could also click on the account button down here and then click on new, or I can just hit control N on the keyboard and that will work uh, just as well. So when I go into uh, the, this screen here, the new account screen, I'm going to go ahead and tell it what type of account I want to work with. So in this particular case, I want to do a fixed asset or a major purchase and then hit continue. And then I'll go ahead and create uh, my, my machinery. So I'm going to click here, uh, machinery. I'll just type uh, the name of it. So we'll call it machinery uh, 3000. That will be the name. And then down here where it says enter opening balance, we only use that if we're going to be entering assets that we purchased in the past, you know, before we work with QuickBooks and we want to have it in the chart of accounts. Otherwise, if you're creating the asset now, but you're about to purchase it, uh, don't put an opening balance there. You're going to use the actual check or bill to record that actual purchase. Anyway, so this is to enter assets that were there from before. So let's say this one is 10,000 and I go ahead and put uh, the closing date of uh, last year, for example. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'll hit uh, Save and Close. And you're going to immediately see a new fixed asset here called Machinery. Now, let's say I also have a loan against that machinery uh, and I have to record that as a liability. So same thing, I'm going to right click with my mouse uh, and click on New or click on the Account button and then click on New or obviously the keyboard shortcut um, that we talked about before, Control N. So now on this screen, I'm going to choose uh, liability. Uh, but in this case, if, if this is a loan that I have to pay back in more than a year, then I'm not going to use uh, this loan here because this is really for the short term loans. I'm going to click here where it says other account type and click on uh, long term liability. And then I'll hit uh, continue. And then I'm going to put here machinery loan, whatever name I want to give it. And I should be um fair and if i if i am entering the asset i should also enter the loan against it however now uh that loan value is extremely important because um the, at, the, at this point i have to actually find out exactly how much i owed on this at the beginning of my accounting period in quickbooks because from that point forward i'm going to be affecting that loan by paying it back right interest principal that sort of thing so we're assuming the loan balance well, not assuming, we're actually going to pick up that um, from an actual uh, statement, from a loan statement from our bank. So let's say the loan balance is 7300 and that was at the end of last year. So I'm just going to type in there 12-31-2015. Uh, I'm actually going to get that from the actual uh, statement. I should anyway. So I'm going to hit OK and then hit uh, Save and Close. So now you should see a $7,300 loan and you should also, if I scroll up, you will see a $10,000 asset. Let me go ahead and maximize these. But let's talk about um, other accounts, uh, not just the balance sheet accounts. Let's talk about the profit and loss accounts. So let's say down here um, under income, for example, this is where I record my revenue, my sales. And I have one, two, three, four, five total accounts uh, that I use to track my income. Now that's okay. Uh, but what that means is when I pull up a report, a profit and loss report, let me go ahead and go to reports, company financial, profit and loss standard. And then I'm going to pull um, all dates here. And you're going to see here that there's currently only uh, three being used, uh, engineering, markup, and reimbursed. If I actually go back into my chart of accounts, I will notice that um, although there's five in there, two of them are not being used. Now, the reason why they're not being used is because, um, let me see which one, uh, other revenue and vendor refund. So the reason why they're not being used is because we didn't put it in a transaction. We didn't tie an item to it. We didn't, uh, we never mess with it per se. However, let's say for example, we do get paid uh, what, what, what this account says, a vendor refund. Let me go ahead and uh, record that. Let me go into banking, uh, make the positive. And just to kind of show you uh, what happens if I record um, a vendor refund. So this is right here, that's the income account. And I'll put, say 5,000 and I'll hit save and close. You should immediately see now that in the profit and loss, you see those uh, $5,000 in there. So 
Think of your chart of accounts as your menu, menu of choices in, in, um, in uh, helping you choose how to categorize all your transactions. Uh, now, in some cases, uh, these end up being redundant. So let me go ahead and go into the profit and loss real quick and just to kind of show you. Let's say that for whatever reason, uh, this right here called markup and reimbursed happen to be redundant, right? So I don't need two of them. They happen to be the same, basically the same thing. I don't need to have two of them in there. So what ends up happening is in order for me to um, basically disappear that redundantness <laughs> per se, I would have to either merge them or make one a sub account of the other. So let's do both choices. So for example, reimbursed um, expense income, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on it and click on edit. And then I'm gonna make it a sub account of markup. So I'm just clicking on that little checkbox there to make it a sub account. And then I'm gonna put here under markup and then I'll hit uh, save and close. So back into my profit and loss, I see both accounts in there, yes. However, there's now a little collapse button next to markup, which I can click and now they both become collapsed so then I don't have to see two redundant accounts. So that sub account choice is a, it's a pretty good choice if I don't really want to disappear the existence of the two. However, if I do want to get rid of um, that potential uh, expanding of seeing both, and I really don't want to see two of them, I want to merge them together. So to merge them, let me go ahead and make this uh, back into a regular account to uncheck the sub account and hit save and close. So to merge them, I have to take one and give it the exact same name as the other. So to do that, I'm gonna right click on it and click on edit. And then I'm gonna type the exact same name. So I'm gonna type markup income. So I'll type markup income. Now I'm gonna um, purposely just misspell this at, a, at an extra S in there. And if I hit save and close, see nothing happens. It just renamed it. So it has to be exact, exact, exact wording. So let me go back, uh, right click on it and click on edit and then I'll remove that S and then I'll hit uh, save and close. And then this is the big question here. It says, hey, you know, these have the same name. Did you mean to merge these? And by the way, the default is no, because once you hit yes, there's no way to undo. You will lose the absolute history of the two separate accounts. So you want to do this very, very intentionally. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes. And now it's gonna merge it together. I'll make a like a little picture noise, letting you know that it that it's doing something. And then when I go back into my uh, report, my profit and loss, notice that the two numbers are still joined together, but no longer I have an option to expand or collapse it. Now let's talk about uh, making some accounts inactive. So I'll leave the profit and loss um, up and running here, and um, let me go ahead and collapse the accounts. Here, that way we're seeing, let's say, just the expense accounts. So let's say that for whatever reason, this advertising expense we're not going to use anymore. So I want to open up my chart of accounts, go down and find my advertising expense. So if I don't want to use it in the future, in other words, next time I go write a check or create a bill, I don't even want advertising expense accounts to show up. Right now, let me just show you real quick. If I try to write a check or create a bill, and I type AD, that shows up, right? Advertising expense. But what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of it completely so it's not even a choice. So what I can do is I can right click and click on make inactive. And that basically will disappear it from my chart of accounts. However, it won't get rid of it for accounting purposes. Look, I'm still looking at my profit and loss. Advertising expense is still there. Now I do have the choice to tell my uh, QuickBooks that in this report, I want to hide inactive accounts. That's actually possible. Let me go into customize report and then click on advanced. And then right here where it says active all and non zero, um, I can actually um, select here, for example, all the non zero. So if, if it does has a transaction in it, obviously it's going to show up, but let me show you. I want to hit okay and I'm gonna change the time period, maybe put uh, this month or something like that. Notice that um, uh, advertising expense wasn't even there, okay? Now, if I actually click on customize report and go back to advance and I actually put all, 
and then I hit OK, and then OK, uh, advertising expense uh, shows up because we're forcing it uh, to be all. So bottom line is as long as it's still in my chart of accounts and I haven't deleted it, uh, there are still ways for it to show up in the report, either when I force it to show all or whenever there is uh, a transaction in it. Okay. However, if I wanted to delete that account, let me go ahead and click this little checkbox here that says include inactive. If I actually wanted to delete it, I'm going to right click and click on delete. Uh, QuickBooks won't let me because uh, it's already being used. Okay. Now in this case, uh, it says, it says it right here. It has at least one transaction. So we can keep it inactive. We don't want to use it in the future and then basically know how to make it show up again if you wanted to. Or um, we can uh, click on this little X here to make it active again. Now, the really important piece is if I make it inactive, which by the way, I couldn't hide in a report if I was forcing to show it. When I'm actually writing a check, if I type advertising, it won't show up. Okay, that's a really important thing. Now, if I actually type the whole thing, so I'm going to type advertising expense and I spell it exactly how it is. So I have to make sure that I, I do spell it exactly how it's supposed to be. And then I hit tab or click out of it. QuickBooks will say, hey, wait a second. You're trying to evoke an account that you made inactive. So I'm giving you basically three choices. One, make it active straight from here. That means that in the future, if I want to use it again, it will show up or use it once. That means make the exception, allow to use it even though it's inactive or obviously cancel, which basically reverts it back. So if I click on use it once, it will let me use it so I can put, you know, whatever dollar amount I want in there. But if I try to use it a second time, so I'm going to do it in the second line, I'll type advertising, it won't let me. So that's kind of a really, really important principle of working um, with the chart of accounts, choosing whether or not you want to merge it, uh, make it a sub account or uh, delete it. Now, a couple of other things here in the chart of accounts. Um, by default, they're organized by account type. So right now you see um, bank first, accounts receivable, current asset, fixed asset, accounts payable, credit card, other current liability, long-term liability, and equity. That's that's the natural order of a balance sheet. If I actually click on this little uh, button here that says balance total, it will now change the entire um, order. It will still keep all the balance sheet accounts at the top because all those have running balances, but it only keep sort of the negative values. And then if I scroll all the way down, I'm going to see the ones with positive values. So that, that actually is not a really good look for it. Now I could also click on name and organize it by name. But then again, it's still all over the place. The best way to do it is by type, which is the default order, which is for it to show basically in the same exact way that it will show on the balance sheet. Now, talking about ordering of the accounts, let me go ahead and show you something. Here in my profit and loss, I see advertising expense, bank service charges, business license, current truck. What we're seeing here is alphabetical order. Now, I can manually say right here in the top right and say, look, sort these. Actually, let me scroll this a little bit to the right here, right here. I can sort these by total and then all of a sudden it will ignore and I can do descending or ascending. It will ignore the alphabetical order. So it won't really care. Sorry about that. Um, it won't really care about this alphabetical order. It will care about the numerical value. However, I'm going to go back and do it by default, which is quote unquote alphabetical order. Now, that really isn't alphabetical order. That is the order in the current chart of accounts. So notice that we have advertising first current truck fourth. If I actually go into my uh, chart of accounts and I move these, so for example, where are you current truck? There it is. So if I actually go to the current truck and I drag it, um, I can drag this up. So I'm going to put my cursor right on top of the diamond. So on top of the little diamond to the left of the account, I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it. And notice that you get a little hyphenated line. Uh, and then I'm going to put it all the way to the top, right under cost of goods sold. Um, and and you, sometimes you may get this error saying you can't move it until you um, click on the little diamond on the top left. So in order to do that, I actually have to click on this diamond up here. It's kind of kind of tricky. I got to click on this diamond here first. Okay, then it'll let me move it. So I'm going to click on the diamond next to the account and scroll up. 
and now you see car and truck first bank service charges second let's do one more let me grab uh, let's say maintenance and I'll grab this one up and I'll drag it right under car and truck right so I got car and truck first maintenance uh, janitorial second so when I go back into my profit and loss you see that my report actually will force the order based on how I did it on the account now I can resort this list for example let's say if I screwed up by clicking on account here and then clicking on resort list that is possible so I click on resort list and then hit OK and that will reorganize it. perfect now the other thing I can do is add account numbers so I can go to the edit menu go to preferences go to accounting company preferences and then click on this little checkbox that says account numbers okay uh, now there's a lot of option here that says show lowest sub account only I don't like that that becomes very confusing I do want to have uh, make sure that that you do at least turn on account number so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and then by default if I'm working on a file that already had them set up you're going to see every one of these accounts with an account number otherwise if you don't see one with one then it's kind of your duty to just create it so I'm going to right click on this one click on edit and then it's a little tricky because there's no like list of which ones are being used and which ones are not being used other than the chart of accounts so you have to make sure that you use a number that kind of makes sense so if we look at all the subcategories here are in this case 6276 6277 6278 and this this is probably a good fit for a 6279 so it was 6279 if it's taken it will let me know he's even close perfect it's not and then you get to see uh, the account number so what ends up happening is now these get now uh, reorganized uh, by account number um, so that's another really important thing okay so right now they're set up by account number but if I actually change the account number so for example um, bank service charges where are you up here okay there it is so I'm gonna make this a different number I'm gonna make it 6999 and then hit uh, save and close and I go back into my report it actually is going to automatically sort it uh, by account number now so when in the absence of account numbers it will do alphabetical value if you manually force the orders it will use the forced order if you add account numbers and you change and you add the numbers it will actually resort by account number now again I could pull this one up here and force uh, the location and then again you're going to see the location change in the report as well until I click on resort list and then it will reorganize it on what makes sense which is by account number now let's talk about some of the tricky parts of working with a chart of accounts uh, let me pull up my profit and loss here and I'm going to pull it up for let's say uh, this month and then I'm going to go ahead and collapse it and just kind of show you something in according to this report my profit is uh, negative 14,000 right, let's do Let's do last month. Maybe we'll pull up something profitable. There you go. So this one is uh, the profitability is 5925 Now, I want to show you something really, really important and really, really tricky. There are some cases in which the QuickBooks user, for whatever reason, changes the actual type of account. So, for example, this one here called Project Outside Consultants. I'm going to go here into my chart of accounts. And this is currently a... Uh, cost of goods sold I can actually right click on this and click on edit and I can change this into let's say for example I'm going to change it into uh, an other expense account and hit save and close or oh, what's going to happen is it's going to move it outside of my cost of goods sold and move it all the way to the bottom here where it says other expense my bottom line won't change that's fine my profit didn't change but what if I didn't change the type to another profit and loss account what if I actually did something really strange which is change that into a balance sheet account so which are my balance sheet accounts really important my balance sheet accounts in this list are my bank accounts receivable other current asset fixed asset other asset accounts payable credit card other current liability long-term liability and equity and then my profit and loss accounts or my income statement accounts are income cost of goods sold 
expense, net income, and other expense. So as long as I change within the same category, my bottom line and my profit won't change. But if I actually cross um, and I change a profit and loss account into a balance sheet account or vice versa, I'm going to affect my profitability, which is a problem if I already filed a tax return, for example, or if I have audited financial statements or I have a third party depending on these numbers to invest in the company or lend the company money. So you got to be really, really careful. Um, again, so this, this bottom five here are my profit and loss and this top uh, 10 here are my balance sheet. So you got to be really, really careful not to do this unless you really know what you're doing or why you're doing it. But let me give you an example. So I'm going to change this into an other current asset and then hit save and close. Notice that QuickBooks tells you, hey, you know, this could be an issue, but you can hit, hit OK and whatever. And then we go back to our uh, profitability report or profit and loss. And now I have much bigger net income. So that's something really, really important uh, to be careful about changing uh, types. Now, there's a couple other really tricky things about uh, chart of accounts. For example, there's one question that it asks you every time you create an account. Let me go into my machinery here and click on edit. Every time you create an account, it asks you for this question, tax line mapping. Most people say, what the heck is that? So I will tell you right off the bat, <clears throat> unless you use uh, TurboTax or uh, Pro Series to prepare your own tax returns straight from QuickBooks, you can completely ignore this. Um, now, even if you don't use it, um, TurboTax or a Pro Series, and you do prepare your own tax return, this could be useful uh, to run what's called an income statement report. In other words, if I actually give this a tax line mapping, and I scroll this down, and I'm gonna put it onto where this one belongs, and you may have to uh, learn a little bit of accounting before you can you can get there. So in this case, uh, I don't think there's even an option for this one. Uh, there isn't because of the type of account, but let's say I'm going to put this into, let me, let me choose a different account and make it a, li a little bit easier. Let's go back into that account that I changed, uh, project outside consultants, go to edit, and then change this into a uh, cost to goods sold. But then in here, I'm going to put it under Schedule C purchases cost to goods sold, just to give you an example. So I'm giving it a tax line mapping line. And again, I said, for the most part, you probably don't even need to worry about this, but if you do use it, I can tell you exactly what you're going to use it for. I'm going to hit save and close and then run a report. I'm going to click on reports and then accountant and taxes. And then somewhere here, we're going to see something called income tax preparation. So it's going to affect these. So I'm going to go to income tax preparation. And then you're basically going to see all your accounts with uh, their balances. And this report here will tell you um, which ones have a tax line mapping and which ones don't. So um, it kind of lets you know uh, that some of these have to be uh, remapped, okay? So that's that one here. But I'm gonna go into reports and look at the other one. Uh, here it says accountant and tax and click on income tax summary. So this one is actually gonna show you uh, which accounts, I'm gonna click here all for a second. You're gonna see uh, which accounts uh, according to the tax line mapping have the balances in order for you to quote unquote prepare your own uh, tax return uh, for this so that's really really important um, only if you're going to prepare a tax return and you want to use this report uh, to do it so you can have in essence an account that has one name in quickbooks and an entirely different name on your uh, tax return and and the, the 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 type of tax return form you're going to use is going to affect what options are there in your tax line mapping. So I don't want to get too much in the weeds and in the tax portion of it. But if I go edit this and see these choices are based on the tax return that you file. Now, the tax return that you file is based on the type of company. The type of company is set up here. So I'm going to go on to company and then go down to my company. Okay. And then I'm going to go into this little pencil here edit and then I'm going to go into report information and then here it says income tax form used so if I change this from a 1040 to an 1120 corporation for example 
and then I hit yes, and then I hit okay. I'm gonna go back into my chart of accounts, and now I'm gonna have different choices. So my tax line mapping won't have Schedule C anymore. It's gonna have something completely different because you know different forms have different uh, different names for the lines and different uh, ways that they report income and expenses and that sort of thing. So that tax tax line mapping is 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 is, is tightly uh, affected by the corporation type that we set up. And also you can set up the fiscal year as well. That way you can do it. You can run tax years that are different than the calendar year of the company. So those are really interesting things um, about uh, the chart of accounts. Now, let me take this a uh, little bit deeper uh, and, and go much deeper into different things you can do with the chart of accounts. For example, here where it says account, you can do this uh, button here that says use uh, find transactions in and basically takes you into a, a find menu and whatever account I have selected. So for example, if I select my car and truck expense and right click and go to, sorry, not right click, but click on account and click find transactions in, that's gonna take me into a search screen and automatically use uh, that account as a filter. That way when I'm doing a, a search or a find, uh, that's already preset there for me, which I can obviously change and that would be another video that talks about um, using the find feature. But that's a really, really neat uh, shortcut. Now I'm gonna click on that uh, um, account button again, and then I'm gonna show you something else. There's this uh, option here called flat view. If I click on flat view, you're gonna notice that some of these sub accounts are gonna look different. So I'm gonna click on flat view, and then what happens is the sub accounts no longer show uh, as an indentation uh, under, for example, car trucking space, now you're gonna see them completely spelled out, including the parent. And the way you know uh, something is a sub account and a parent is because they're separated by that uh, column there. Now, another really important trick about that, that column, if I go uh, write a check, for example, and I wanna have a subcategory for my car and truck expense that is not already there. So notice I got a couple of really good choices here. I got car lease, gas and oil, repairs and maintenance. I got a whole bunch of options. But for example, parking and tolls is not here. So if I wanted to create that sub account on the fly while creating a bill or a check or entering something in the register or maybe even through bank feeds, what I do is I, I type up the parent account and then right next to the parent account, I'm gonna add a column. So I'm just gonna basically type in a column, not, not an equal sign, but a column. So I'll type that column in there. Let me just zoom in. And the minute you type that column, it, it basically previews the sub accounts so you know um, what's there. So you, you get to now uh, add whatever you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and just type in there what I want. So I'm gonna type there uh, parking and uh, tolls, perfect. And I'll hit tab and then a QuickBooks will say, hey, this account is not in your chart of accounts. So I'm gonna click on setup. And then once I click setup, uh, it'll automatically take me to the same category where the parent came from. So I hit continue. And it will automatically make it a sub account of car and truck expense. So it's a really uh, important, useful shortcut. Now I gotta give it an account number because I'm using account numbers. So I'll preview it real quick and it looks like, you know, 6139 would be the right choice there. So I'll go ahead and type the account number 6139 and then hit uh, save and close and save and close. Perfect. So now you're gonna see uh, parking and tolls as a subcategory of car and truck expense. So if you don't like seeing uh, the sub accounts as a subcategory with that column there, we can just change this back from um, hierarchical view instead of flat view. So I'm gonna change that back. Uh, and it's really based on your choice, you can choose whatever works uh, better for you. Now, another really important thing is the description. So I'm gonna right click on the chart of accounts uh, anywhere and click on customize columns. And then we're gonna see all these different choices that we have. Uh, description is the one I wanna focus in. We're gonna click on description and click on add. And by the way, if you're working with a tax line mapping, you could also select a uh, tax line and click on add. So these two would be useful um, if you're actually working with a uh, tax line mapping, which I showed you just now. But this description is really, really interesting. And the reason why um, it's interesting is because 
uh, those, that description will show up in a report called the account listing report. So if I go to reports, list, account listing, the descriptions show up in here. So that's, this could be useful as a you know cheat sheet that I can print for my um, bookkeeper or even for some of my clients uh, that I that want to learn how to uh, do the accounting themselves. And I can add descriptions there in their own terms so they understand exactly what goes there and what doesn't go there. But the other interesting part about uh, the description is to pick and choose whether or not you want to see it on reports. So if I click on reports, company financial, profit and loss, notice that all the descriptions are showing there uh, next to the accounts in parentheses. Now, the reason why they show up there is because it's an option that I can turn off or on. So if I go to edit preferences, reports and graphs, company preferences, and then go to name only and hit OK, you only see account names. Again, if I go to edit preferences and go to name and description, then I get to see the name and the description. So in some cases, description is useful for reports, like in this case, or in some cases, it's just going to be for internal use or to print uh, you know, special reports uh, of accounts with descriptions and that sort of thing. So that's really up to you whether or not you want to use uh, descriptions on reports. Another uh, common question I have is, you know, how do I export my chart of accounts and import it into another QuickBooks file? Or how to take a chart of accounts I have in Excel and import it into QuickBooks because I already did, pretty much did all the work in Excel. So that's a little bit tricky. Let's talk about basically both things. So first of all, in my chart of accounts, I have the option to export this by clicking on File, Utilities, Export, List to IAF, and then I'll hit the little checkbox under Chart of Accounts, click that, and then hit OK. And then I'll give it a name, so I'm going to call it Hector's COA. And then I'll click on Save. So if I open an entirely different QuickBooks file that doesn't have a chart of accounts or has an entirely different chart of accounts and I wanted to import the chart of accounts that I have here, I simply go into File, Utilities, Import, IF file, and then select the chart of accounts. There you go, Chart Hector, or Hector, I think it was Chart Hector. And then I click Open, and then I'll bring that chart of accounts uh, back into that other uh, QuickBooks file. Now, the other interesting thing you can do with that export is you can edit it in Excel. Um, whether you're going to bring it back into the original QuickBooks file or a different QuickBooks file, you can make some interesting edits. So, for example, I'm going to open up a blank, a, a blank workbook in Excel, something without any data on it, just a, a blank workbook in Excel, and it has to be Excel. And then I'm going to grab that chart of accounts. Uh, where is it? Uh, there it is, chart Hector. And I'm going to click and drag it to uh, that blank workbook. What that's going to do is that's going to open a new spreadsheet with that chart of accounts that I just exported. And if I wanted to just add accounts, okay, so let's say, for example, I have a, another database with accounts in Excel. I basically go all the way to the bottom here. And all I have to do is grab the last one that's there, uh, copy, and then paste a couple of lines. And then what that will do is it'll give me all that extra information that's there. Let me scroll back up. Uh, all the extra information that's there uh, needed to uh, do the export. So let me just scroll back down. So you see all these here, I added, I duplicated them in order, so I can replace them with something else. So for example, I can come in here and paste it from another spreadsheet or give it whatever name. So I'm going to put here house, car, kids, food, for example. And then I'm going to, right now, these are all other expenses. Now I can choose the type that are going to be. So if it's going to be cost to goods sold, I have to pick the category and I can just use this right here. Cogs is called. So I can make this cost to goods sold if I want it by just changing the category. And this is kind of techy. Yes, I know because this is a spreadsheet um, and you have to make sure that the header information stays intact. And a lot of this information um, is extra and is uh, and, and may be needed. The only thing you need is the name of the account, the category, and the account number. So let's call this one 5111, 5222, 
5333 and 5444. Perfect. And then I'm going to click on save and go ahead and close that and then go back into QuickBooks just to show you. And let's take a look at the cost of goods sold account we have now. So right now in our options, we don't have that house car thing that I just made up. So to import it, I'm going to go to file, utilities, import, import an IAF file, and then select chart Hector, the one I just changed, and hit open. And then when it's done importing, you're going to see all those accounts I added in uh, that spreadsheet. There we go. Car, kids, food, and I don't know where the other one is. There you go, house. So um, that lets you know what you can do with uh, that IAF export and importing it back in. Now, what if I, I have a chart of accounts in an Excel spreadsheet like this? Uh, not something I exported from QuickBooks, just something I had in my own uh, spreadsheet. Now, um, the, the formatting of it, I mean, it could vary. Just make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. However, it's really important that the basic components are in your spreadsheet. So you definitely got to have an account name. And the maximum number of characters that this can be is uh, 31. So that's really, really important. Can't have more than 31 characters. Uh, the type, right? So in this case, I call it expense, income, and fixed asset. And then the account number, which could be a maximum of, I believe, is seven characters. Um, let's just double check that. I, sometimes I forget <laughs> the specific details. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, a maximum of seven characters I can have under the account number. And under the account name, the maximum is, I believe, uh, 41. Let's just double check here. So there's 10, 10 more, 10 more, right, 31. Okay, that's the maximum number of characters I can have in an account name is 31. So just confirming that, that it was uh, 31 characters. Anyway, so a maximum of 31 characters on the account name, a maximum of seven numbers on the account number and the type, you just have to have the same exact name that it has in QuickBooks. So whatever they call it in QuickBooks, you have to name it the same way in, uh, in your spreadsheet. So in this case, it's asset singular, not assets plural. So you have to make it match. Anyway, so let me save this. So I, to import a chart of accounts, from Excel like that, we're gonna go into File, Utilities, Import Excel Files, Excel Files. And then I'm gonna hit No on that first question. And then it says, uh, this is kind of like the simple portion here to the left side. It says you want me to walk you through it, but look, uh, Accounts is not even an, op an option here. So we're gonna pick this Advanced Import that actually allows me to import my account. So I'm gonna click on Advanced Import, and then I'm gonna go to here was a set up the import, click on browse and go find that spreadsheet. So let's go down here to, there we go, there's my spreadsheet, hit open. It will take about uh, 30 seconds to a minute to load. And then when it's completely loaded, here it'll ask you to select the sheet. So I'm gonna, it's, there's only one sheet on that spreadsheet. So I'll pick sheet one. And then before I import, I have to create a mapping. So here on the, Bottom, it says uh, data mapping. So I basically have to uh, create a new mapping. So I'm gonna go to add new. And once I click add new, a new window will pop up and I just give it a name. We'll call it uh, chart import. You have to give it a name. You kind of have to set up the template. So under import type, I'm gonna pick account. Okay, pick account. And then here it gives me all the different uh, choices. So look, I can pick and choose what I want to bring in. So if I'm bringing in a chart of accounts with balance sheet accounts and those have balances, good news is I can actually import the balances um, as of a specific date. But that's if the accounts don't exist. If they already exist, then I can't import the balance. They have to be brand new accounts. Anyway, so I'm gonna go to type here and go to type and then number, number and name, name. And basically what I'm doing is I'm matching uh, the columns. Okay, so I'm just matching the columns with uh, the data set. Okay, so let me uh, close that and go to save. And then real quick before I import, I'm just going to click on preview. And the preview window is, is nice. It's not very complete, but it kind of 
lets you know exactly, um, gives you a first couple of fields, letting you know how it's reading the data and whether or not there's preliminary errors there. So if I just click on import and hit OK, you will notice that now I have a fixed asset called truck 2015. If I go to my income area, we're going to see one called international income. And then if I go down to my expenses, I should have a warehouse expense somewhere here. There's warehouse expense. So that's basically how you import um, an account from Excel. Now, I want to talk about importing the balances. It's really important because I mentioned it briefly. Let's say, for example, I am going to uh, bring in some balances. So I'll delete these here. And let's say that I'm going to bring in two trucks. Um, truck 2016 and truck 2017. And then I'll bring in some balances here. So I'm going to give them different account numbers. That's really important because it's not going to work if they have same account numbers. And then I'm going to give them a balance. So I'm going to put here balance. And then this will be 25,600. And this one's going to be, let's say, 19,850. And then I have to create a new one, a new column called date. And I'll put there 12, 31, 2015, whatever the as of date for that import is going to be. And again, this only works if these accounts are brand new. If they're already in your chart of accounts, you cannot import the balance. They have to be brand new accounts. They cannot be in your chart of accounts. So uh, let me go ahead and close that and do the same thing. So file, utilities, import, Excel files, go to advanced import, select my spreadsheet here under browse, select the sheet, and then I'm gonna change the mapping. So I'm gonna go to edit the mapping because the mapping that we set up previously only really contained um, the first three. So I wanna add now opening balance, and then I also wanna add a date, the as of date. So I'm gonna hit uh, save and then click on preview. Okay, so there's my two. And then you kind of get, get to preview the data before it comes in. Go to import. And then go into my fixed asset. And there it is. So when I did the import, it gave me an error. Let's take a look at that error. So let's go to utilities, import, Excel files, advanced import. And let's do an import here. And if there's an error, it will tell you at the end, which I kind of just skipped through just to show you. Okay, so there's no right here, two errors. So I'm gonna go to save and save my error log. Let's call it error. And then let me go into my desktop and open up that error log. And this will tell you exactly what couldn't get imported and why. So for example, in this case, we had, um, duplicate possibly du duplicate uh, names or duplicate account numbers right here see duplicate account number so if i wanted to import that 2016 one which i think only the 2017 got imported Let's see yeah only the 2017 got imported 2016 didn't because it's, it's probably sharing the account number with another account that's there so let me go ahead and delete this one and like i said as long as there's no conflict on names or account numbers, it should import no problem. So let's try that again. Yeah, and it's kind of good, whoops, uh, file, utilities, import, Excel. It's kind of good to um, go through the errors because it, it, at the beginning, you may not know exactly how this process works and you are gonna have potentially some errors um, and just you know deal with them, read the log, and you know after a while, you kind of catch up to it. So let's see what happens now. There we go. So now both imported, no problem. Um, the one from before and the one from now because there was no conflict with the account numbers. And the last resource I wanna show you is this article I wrote in my website. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and add that link into the description and the comments below. Uh, but if you go to this uh, page, which is gonna show basically a couple of accounts with uh, with descriptions, uh, cost to goods sold category and expense. But what the real useful piece is here where it says you can also download 
spreadsheet here. So if you click on the little here button um, and you open it, it's gonna open up a spreadsheet in Google Docs, which you can then click on file, download as, and click on download as Excel. And then it's gonna open up uh, an, a big Excel spreadsheet here that if you actually click on the filters here and you search the industry you want, like let's say construction, you search it through here, select it, whichever one you want, right? So you gonna select it and then business type, select, let's say for example, this is a, uh, let's see, partnership and hit okay. It's gonna narrow down to the accounts that it suggests for you to use and their description, which, which of course, you can just copy and paste these into a new spreadsheet, uh, blank one, and then import them with the techniques we showed earlier. So the real useful piece about uh, this spreadsheet is, is just informational. It's, you know, it's just having all the options there, having uh, the accounts and the, and the descriptions, you can print them just to kind of start the conversation with your accountant, with your bookkeeper, with the business owner, the business manager about what categories you should be using and it helps you plan for setting up that chart of accounts. So that's a real nice uh, resource that I think for anyone getting started with chart of accounts can have. And uh, this is basically one of my more comprehensive videos in a very narrow uh, subject matter, a narrow topic like chart of accounts. If you like this type of video, hit like, add comments below in terms of what you like and what else you would like to see. Subscribe to the channel to get automatic um, uh, notifications on when I make a new video. And um, and again, if, if it was helpful for you and, and you think I should make more videos like this, add comments below. Um, definitely check out the link that I just talked about and I uh, hope this was uh, helpful. Thank you very much.